At the end of May 1934, Zev Jabotinsky came to the Eclair Tirage Studios in Paris and delivered a speech in front of a movie camera. In the first three rows, he sat several family members and friends. They were the audience. The director yelled, Action! And, turning to the viewers, Jabotinsky asked, What had the English regering in any moment gemeint with a Moisdruck national heim? Occasionally, he rifled through the papers in front of him, using diagrams and graphs to illustrate his ideas. The film was meant to be distributed and screened simultaneously in various countries throughout the world. But it is not clear whether this indeed happened. Is the film in diagramming. Until then, only a few people had tried to use the medium of film to disseminate an organized doctrine, like that presented by Jabotinsky, with regard to a broad spectrum of political and security issues, using a dense tapestry of demographic and social data, as well as economic issues. Everything came together in this speech. Everything led to one firm conclusion. The Jews must come to Eretz Israel urgently. These things were said only one year after the Nazis rose to power and long before the skies of Europe darkened and storm clouds covered the continent. Jabotinsky's words were prophetic. They were said out of a deep understanding of historic and political processes and a clear and knowledgeable awareness of demographic processes, including a correct reading of the world map and political trends. The film, whose quality after 70 years is surprising and deeply moving, has been preserved at the Jabotinsky Institute. On these shores and others, the first immigration ships began to arrive under the cover of darkness 85 years ago. The British refer to it as illegal immigration, while the Jews called it Ali Abet or Afalpi. Following the publication of the White Paper in 1930 by the British government, Zev Jabotinsky, then one of the leaders of the Beitar movement and the leader of the revisionist Zionist faction in the World Zionist Organization, warned that it was necessary to come to Israel in every possible way and immediately. Zev Jabotinsky was born in Odessa in 1880, a leader, a writer, a poet. He died in New York. He was 60 years old at the time of his death. For 24 years, the remains of the exiled leader remained on foreign soil, awaiting the order. It came on the 15th of March, 1964, a decision of the government of Israel, initiated by Prime Minister Levi Eshkol. Zev Jabotinsky's remains were brought to Israel 24 years after his death. He was buried in a state ceremony on Mount Herzl. The Jabotinsky Institute, which perpetuates the legacy of the Beitar leader, became an archive center that houses rare copies and various publications of the movement. Its beginnings were modest. Eventually, the institute moved to Mitsudat Ze'ev, the Likud headquarters in Tel Aviv. In 1958, the Jabotinsky archives were recognized as public archives according to the archives law. שהחומרים שלו הם החומרים של זאב ז'בוטינסקי ותנועתו וכל התנועות האחרות שקמו ברוחו. יש לנו גם את כל הארכיונים של מוסדות התנועה הרוויזיוניסטית בגולה וגם בארץ ישראל. יש לנו ארכיון של מחתרת אצל הארגון הצבאי הלאומי וגם חומרים שקשורים בלח"י, חומרים של נילי, ברית הבריונים ועוד ועוד ועוד. 47 years later, the Jabotinsky law, similar in its general outline to the Herzl law, was passed, reflecting the recognition by the State of Israel and the encouragement it gives to the perpetuation and study of Zev Jabotinsky's doctrines and the history of the revisionist movement. 
The law also determines that exhibits and documents connected to the work of Zev Jabotinsky and the revisionist movement should be preserved and restored. אני מסביר לרבים מהאורחים המגיעים לישראל, ראשי פרלמנטים, ראשי מדינות, נשיאים, שהצורך של העם היהודי במדינה בא לידי ביטוי אולי כדוגמה בשואה הנוראה שנפלה עלינו. אני מסביר להם שז'בוטינסקי בא ואמר זאת עוד ב-1923, כאשר כתב את מאמרו קיר הברזל. אנחנו נחזור לארצנו, משום שאין לנו ארץ אחרת. משום שאנחנו לא יכולים להתקיים כבודדים מבלי שנתקיים כעם. Next to the Institute, a museum was also opened where study days and seminars for the public are held. אנחנו זקוקים לפחות להכפלת השטח כאן בבניין, גם כדי להרחיב את נפח הפעילות, אבל גם כדי שנוכל לשמר טוב יותר את החומרים ההיסטוריים, הדוקומנטריים, שנמצאים ברשותנו. ואנחנו מקווים שבעתיד הקרוב נוכל להגשים את החלום הזה. The Jabotinsky Institute initiates research and publishes books in various publications. A reading room with computer stations and a microfilm reader machine is open to the public. The various documents that arrived in Israel after World War II from abroad include posters, articles, and thousands of letters that Jabotinsky wrote during his travels throughout the world. They were collected by the Institute's founder, Joseph Paamoni, and are meticulously preserved in display cases. In every city in Israel, there are streets, schools, and institutions named after Zev Jabotinsky. Explanatory signs have recently been placed on the facade of the house in which Zev Jabotinsky lived in Jerusalem, and from which he was arrested, which also describe portions of his life. The British forbade Jabotinsky's entry into Eretz Yisrael since he was urging European Jewry to violate the white paper and come to Israel. As part of the joint project conducted by the government of Israel, spearheaded by the office of the Prime Minister together with Karen Haisod, it was decided to help implement the Jabotinsky law. The preservation and restoration of Jabotinsky's heritage are an indivisible part of the Jewish people in Israel and abroad. This is a call to Karen Haisod's supporters. כל מי שעוזר לקרן היסוד בעניין זה עוזר לקביעת מורשת ישראל ולמורשת התנועה הציונית ומדינת ישראל כדבר שהוא בבחינת והגדת לבנך בבחינת לימוד הדורות הבאים, מה שהיה, שכן בלי מה שהיה, איך נדע איך יהיה. We have returned to the shores of Tel Aviv, the first Hebrew city, to whose waters the first immigrant boats arrived. It is here that they first stepped on the land of Eretz Israel. From here, they were never uprooted.